I enjoy raising my family here. That is the most important aspect of living in Eastern Oregon. I really like this part of the country because I haven't found anywhere else in the world that I'd rather be. I enjoy getting up every morning, looking out the window and seeing wild turkeys and deer and uh, even an occasional cougar. The land's been in the family for a long time and really, you know, it's the way we make our living, but it's also the way we enjoy life and uh, we don't want to do anything that's going to harm the long-term health of or productivity of the land. I think our land is, a, is hopefully an extension and a humble example of who we are and what we stand for. We're truly living the dream. It's, um, it's a real blessing. More and more people are living the dream in the forests of Eastern Oregon. Your dream might involve earning a living from the land or maybe just enjoying a restful view. Compared to the fast pace of our modern lives, forests appear stable, permanent, and unchanging to a casual observer. But forests are constantly changing. Some changes are slow and hard to see, like growth and competition among trees. Other changes, like wildfire, are more sudden and dramatic. It might be tempting to think that nature can take care of itself, and that a hands-off approach to forest management is best. But choosing to do nothing at all increases the risks posed by catastrophic wildfire, insects, and disease. Active forest management will help ensure the forests of Eastern Oregon remain healthy and viable for future generations. It's not always easy to make choices about forest management, but landowners have access to a number of valuable community resources to get the job done. Regardless of how much land you own, active forest management is an important and personal process. Thinning, removing some of the trees in a forest stand, is a key management practice that can help lower the risk of destructive wildfires and insect attacks and increase the rate of diameter growth on remaining trees. With too many trees of a given size, they're competing for, for a limited amount of uh, water, nutrients, and sunlight. So as trees get bigger, they need to be thinned. You know, fire used to do the thinning on the landscape for us. And uh, because we've more or less excluded fire for the last hundred years or so, um, not a lot of thinning is occurring naturally, and hence we need to do that, that job ourselves. Over the next 15 minutes, we'll look at how you can use thinning to create valuable wildlife habitat, improve forest health and productivity, and protect your home and property from wildfire. There are um, a number of reasons why a landowner might want to manage his or her property for wildlife. Uh, we know from surveys of Oregon small landowners, uh, small woodland landowners, that uh, many of them have aesthetics or wildlife pretty high on their priority list. And uh, many folks buy land just to have it for that purpose. Thinning provides um, a number of benefits for wildlife. Um, you, you open up the stand typically, depending upon how heavily you thin, especially if it's a moderate to heavy thinning operation, uh, you often get pretty substantial response out of the forage. By and large, most wildlife species like diversity are attracted to edge habitats, they're attracted to uh, different species, they're attracted to different forest heights, canopy heights. If a landowner did nothing else than, uh, than to make their property really diverse, they would be doing a, a, a good service for, for wildlife. Snags, first and foremost, are a good wildlife benefit. I mean, in the Blue Mountains, uh, approximately a third of the species use snags for some portion of their life history. There are other reasons associated with thinning, uh, forest management reasons, and growing large trees faster. And uh, getting some of those uh, structural attributes can be very important for wildlife as well. We've taken inventory of the wildlife 
that uh, we've observed here on the uh, property. Uh, the number of birds are, is in excess of 130 different species of birds that frequent our property here and in excess of 30 mammals, which I think is a pretty good indication of what we're doing on the land. We certainly have recognized the value of leaf trees, making a mosaic of thinning and uh, not thinning to benefit uh, the different species of wildlife. We've left traditional strutting grounds with the elk rut, rub trees and bedding grounds and uh, calving, you know, grounds that the cows use every spring. We found if we stay out of those areas, they're pretty content coming back every spring, every fall. And we do have elk here year round, but the big time we have them is in the spring and fall. But we've also found that if we manage other parts of the ranch, that they will prefer moving into those after five or 10 years. It, but we've also found if we don't manage some of those areas that we've left traditionally, that the insect and disease will manage it for us in a non-selective way. They'll just go in and the beetle outbreak will take everything. And with that in mind, we, we have decided and, and learned once the elk have moved from one area to another or deer, we go back into those areas that we saved for them 10 years ago and manage them before they get you know, knocked out by beetle or insect disease problem. It's a working ranch. We're, we're working class people. This piece of property has to pay for itself. It has to be a viable part of our lifestyle. We basically have two enterprises, I guess. One is cattle and one is timber production. So our management practices are to maximize grass production on the meadowland and to a certain extent in the timberland. And uh, on the timber side of things, uh, maximize growth uh, on that end, uh, but also to maintain a wildlife friendly, healthy ecosystem. Many of the forests in eastern Oregon are far too dense. Uh, removing or thinning trees out, uh, one, uh, reduces competition between trees, and so you enhance the, the vigor of remaining trees. Uh, two, by doing that, it improves their resistance to bark beetle. And um, another aspect is by thinning, you can actually improve the fire resistance of those stands to wildfire. Probably for a lot of landowners, um, those are all good objectives, but, but one is, uh, another one is, is value. Uh, at some point, uh, landowners have to pay the bills, taxes and other things. And by thinning now, they can increase the size of these trees and their value uh, down the road. And so they have an asset that keeps growing and gaining in value. Grazing for a rancher is just as important as two by fours. In fact, probably more important because the, the cattle ranching is the day-to-day -day breadwinner for, for a lot of the ranchers here. In timber, is uh, incidental or it's a periodic harvest that just helps add to their asset portfolio. And by thinning, of course, they can open the stands up and create more forage, which helps the bottom line as it relates to um, uh, their cattle um, um, operation. There's always been a debate between ourselves and other people and amongst ourselves about how much forage you can produce on land that's been thinned uh, to a specific uh, density. Uh, we find that uh, trees and grass is really compatible. 